you see it in the title, we have Frank No Start problem in our 2009 BMW E92 335i and 54 engine. It's on MSD81 platform. So how did I end up here? After I purchased E92 with mysterious leg problem, that's why I paid only 5k back in September 2021. I'm still in the process of making that video, but it will be available pretty soon as I was restoring many things in the car and was working with electronics a lot. From the electric problem, Beamer was repaired in a couple of weeks, but two months ago, I started having the issue on the cold start, especially when it was cold outside. In the morning, I would have pretty rough running for about 30 seconds, then throughout the day, I would have a couple hiccups when starting the car. So as many of us BMW owners, you go from the cheapest to the more expensive part. And that's what I did. I replaced spark plugs and coils, but that time I didn't have any check engine codes. And after replacement, it started working better, but not much. So after keeping an eye on a rough running chart, I figured it was injector. But I also checked the cylinder too, and it was index 12 injector. So in my head, it shouldn't be any problems with it. We're gonna talk about injectors a little bit later as we're gonna be testing them. A couple days later, I got my first check engine light, which was the misfire in several cylinder. I deleted the codes and went to the gas station, fill up the tank, then stopped by at AutoZone, reset adaptation, then got some injector cleaner from Liquid Moly, pour it into the tank, start the car, <laughs> extremely rough running. Check engine, power was reduced, so on. Right in the spot, I checked the codes, low pressure sensor fault. Nothing crazy apparently, it actually stuck on 65 HPA. By the time I finished scanning, the car just stalled. I wasn't able to start the car as many times as I tried, so I thought the low pressure or high pressure fuel pump died. And in combination with the low pressure fuel sensor, it wouldn't start anyway. Because when I was driving from the gas station, the car had a couple hiccups. At the AutoZone, I got the Duralize low pressure fuel sensor. They had it in stock. I replaced it and none. Same problem. So I ordered the low pressure fuel pump, high pressure fuel sensor, MUF sensor, and Chinese high pressure fuel pump. Don't judge me hard. We towed the car back home. And on the following day, I started testing the car. Find pretty interesting result. As the low pressure fuel pump would work if I actuate the pump through INPA, I definitely can hear the pump, but I still would not get any reading from the low pressure sensor. Now order the sensor from the FCP, which was OEM, and it cost 90 bucks compared to Duralast, which was 140 bucks and did not work. Meanwhile, I replaced the low pressure fuel pump, which also came from FCP and it cost me 300 bucks. Later on, I find out that my pump was working correctly. After that, I check all the fuses and relays. It's pretty easy to test them, check the Google for it. In my case, everything was working as it should. Same way I checked the MSD81, but I couldn't find anything wrong with that. As the MSD80, known for the most fit problems, an injector cutout, the new DME had those problems sorted out. Finally, I received the low pressure sensor. After replacing, I start getting the reading from it. And pump would get the pressure all the way to 6600, but for some reason, my car stopped running pump when I opened the car. You basically not hearing the low pressure fuel pump when you open the driver door, but totally normal as I find out later. The battery getting weak and a car trying to preserve power for the starter. So after replacing high pressure and low pressure fuel sensors, still no start. Car will get fired in one or two cylinders for a split of a second and then will sound like no Dust. fuel. At this point, I decide to replace EKPS, which is fuel system module. After replacing and coding, still nothing. Hopeless, I replace the high pressure fuel pump. Meanwhile, checking all of the air assist and vacuum lines as well as muff sensors. Sensor. All gas gets clean in the throttle body, checking all the wiring to the coils and injector. And at the end, still no lock. By the way, I did check the spark and I have the spark. As well as I can say, there are fuel inside the cylinder as the spark plug is soaking wet and it smells like fuel. So at this point, I'm going for the injector. I removed the one from the cylinder too, which was index 12, but not the rest of them. I didn't know that I had most of them index 7, but that has nothing to do with the current problem. I connect the injector back to the rail pop the connector, crank the engine, the output is great. It worked as it should and it blasts in fuel like railgun. The fuel also flowed through the line freely. After that, I went back to scouting forum. Lots of people said to disconnect the MUF sensor. As
as in some cases it would prevent car from starting. I did try that as some other sensor. In the same forum I read that MOP sensor not having any impact on starting car. It only worked when car is running. I still did try to disconnect it till none but when I removed the sensor it was hard in sludge and carbon deposit. So I took advantage and cleaned it. Since I can run the engine I wouldn't have any reading or check engine. So I got some engine starting fluid thread it into intake and sure enough starts but it dies right after I stop spraying it. At this point car showed me that the MOP sensor is faulty. Getting back to the FCP bind MAP sensor installing car still would not run on its own only with starting fluid. Then I had check engine light at its same mixture problem bank 1 and bank 2. In this case you can think of O2 sensor since they have huge impact on the mixture control but it's in the bank 1 and 2 also can trust the codes as the side to run engine on starting fluid long enough to warm up and it did work as planned. Car would run after two minutes of using the aerosol but if I shut the engine off it's not gonna be able to start it on its own. At the end I thought I filled the tank with the bad fuel and was about to get into it and start cleaning but as is to have option that you can see the fuel quality it was showing that the gasoline is high grade. After that I decided to give it another try with the starting fluid. So I let the car idle for an hour then test drive it and got some reading. As fuel pressure O2 sensor air and more it was showing that the muff and air flow is in the red zone and it was pretty suspicious since I did replace all of the sensors but then the last moment I decided to reset adaptation value and adaptation encoding which you should do every time you replace any sensor that operate major components as fuel and air system or even cooling. After adaptation I still had problem of starting the car but in couple of minutes the RPM and rough running stopped. After cleaning the codes and restarting the engine everything worked as it should. In conclusion car continuously adapting to the way you drive and the way sensor getting dirty or gunked up so car always changing the value and they can go as high as 20% from the factory default set. In my case the map and the math sensor has reached 20% breakdown and when I restarted the adaptation the auto zone I messed up everything. Not because adaptation but because of my map sensor wasn't working and car can't see it for some reason. One huge problem was me as of not being able to read the data from the sensor as INPA had all data ready as far as car could be started. At this point only thing that is wrong with the car is leaky injector. I swapped them with the used one index 9 and sold the car a couple days ago for 8500. Car had 146,000 miles and with all the expenses I managed to make in 1500 in profit. A little stupid as car have so many hours of free labor and parts replaced. I know I should keep the car but I'm definitely ready for another project that is going to be revealed soon. So feel free to leave me a comment to help you with diagnosing any related problem. At the end quick highlights diagnosing process to save you some time. Step 1. Make sure you have spark at least in 3 cylinder. Use the tool or just as I did pop the spark plug into the coil and crank the engine. See if there is spark. Make sure you low pressure fuel pump building pressure. You can see it through the computer or you can try to undo the nut from the fuel rail. It has to be built up of pressure. Make sure to use protective glasses or wrap the towel around the line and crank the nut. They're gonna be pretty high pressure. Fuel can squirt pretty bad. Step 3. After you crank the engine pop the spark plug out and see if it's wet from fuel. If so you have bad mixture. In that case you have problem with air cyst. Step 4. Unplug the muff and the mop sensor and see if you can start the engine. Otherwise remove the sensor for inspection as you can physically see if the sensor have any gunk or oil on them. Step 5. Use starting fluid. You also can use it before getting into the troubleshooting. In that case if car would start and run as it should you know the timing and spark is good so you will need to look for the problem in the fuel or air system. Step 6. Inspect all of the air lines for leak as if the mixture is not right you will not be able to start the car. For example car will adjust the fuel delivery based on MAP and MAP sensor air pressure reading so if the sensor calculating an amount of air the DME will deliver an amount of fuel and of course if sensor can read data or it has lots of sludge on it you have not enough or too much air but not fuel. Anyway guys hope video was helpful and if you have some question feel free to leave me a comment subscribe like and see you in the next one.